We are controlling transmission. So yeah, so make sure you check out the Heart Attack Grill at um, in Vegas downtown. And um, like I said, they, they serve you with naughty nurses. And um, what the fuck else do they do? You know, they put you in a, in a hospital bib. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a hospital, like a hospital gown and shit. And then like the IV. The IV is like the um, like the the wine and oh, oh shit. There we go. The IV is like the wine and shit. So it's like you know you got like a, a, a IV drip and it's wine, and the uh, Pepsi and the Coke is like pure, like real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pop. It's it, no high fructose. Fructose corn syrup is, is real sugar and shit. It's like a real sh sugar ass uh, shit. So you know what I'm saying. It, it tastes what? good. I guess I don't know. I'm not really a. I'm not a. Not a pop nigga. You know what I'm saying. So <laughs> it didn't do it for me. But you can. Um, the, the 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 key. You know what I'm saying. The gimmick is. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying. It's like a fifty style bar and shit. Or re a restaurant. I'm sorry. And um, like a, one of them 50 styles, you know, uh, diners, you know, you're seeing them. Back to the future. Exactly, but that's an 80s movie. That goes back to the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> you, um, you can eat the, uh, the, the cheeseburger, right? And um, you can either have like one, a single patty, or you can have all the way up to eight patties. But you got to eat it. Because if you don't eat it, you get spanked by the naughty nurses. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't need to order eight patties to, <laughs> to do the job to one patty. <laughs> 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 motherfucker, motherfucker had one patty. He's like, oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you get spanked like three times and shit by the naughty nurses and shit. So, you know. I said, me and wife, we was out there the second time I went to Vegas and uh, saw motherfuckers get spanked and shit. I said, I saw these three British motherfuckers get spanked after trying like a, like a four, like a four piece. You know what I'm saying? They had like a quadruple patty burger and shit. And, 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 and they're not like, you know, McDonald patties. You know what I'm saying? These is like, each of them is like half pound patties. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like, oh, yeah, it's not like, yeah, it's like a, a Baconator and like that. Nah, it's like a half pound patty. Each each patty is a half pound. You know what I'm saying? I only did two. You know what I'm saying? But I made sure I went over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the dub. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the scourge of the IWC lays down for nobody, for nobody. but my wife. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what it was. What my dad know. Naughty nurse bitches spanking on you. It wasn't even that. You know what I'm saying? She was down for the shit. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, I, I just don't like getting hit. The fuck? <laughs> I don't give a fuck if it's a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Definitely not no nigga. You know what I'm saying? I ain't like getting spanked when I was fucking eight. You know what I'm saying? I fuck, I don't like getting spanked at like 30. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got kinks and shit. That's not mine. Cannabis connection in the house. 420 boys in the goddamn building. There we go. Yeah, you, you was on mute like the entire first first I'll go around right there. Oh, wonderful. It doesn't really matter. You ain't say too much, but <laughs> you did your best uh, Ed McMahon impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, don't, who, I don't even know how long was that uh, you was recording there, so. <laughs> Four minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> For the extreme retro review for ECW, April 3rd, 1997. For extreme retro review number 260, if you have the coveted, illustrious, and highly elusive tape trader show, you will know that 55 minutes and 7 seconds were given to you by those internet guys who trudged and paved the way for digital content like this. 
smoked. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! The, it's, it, you almost sound sincere when you say this bullshit. The person to the right of me watches this show via the WWE Network, which is on Peacock, and he will give you his thoughts and views as well as the time from the streaming service that leases the streaming service that he subscribes to. To all the ladies that are listening right now that uh, listen to us because of me, uh, go ahead and get you some cock. Uh, If you did get you some cock, you would know that the time for what they have labeled as the April 1st show of 1997 was 47 minutes and 42 seconds. And my overall thought of the show was that this should have been the show that was the go-home show for Barely Legal because we all know that ECW has a long history of having shitty go-home shows and I'm like, oh man. I, so I knew this wasn't the go-home show, but I'm like, um, I, I thought this would have been a perfect go-home show for them. We got Joey at the Nest from the Golden Dome in Schittsburg, Pennsylvania. And he's hyping the Funk Lifetime Achievement Banquet on April 12th, the night before the pay-per-view, which is on April 13th. And Joey hypes the entire, uh, the the upper card of the pay-per-view. H-Dub, your thoughts of the upper card of Barely Legal? Somehow they managed to, to have a, a solid upper card match, um, uh, main event, or whatever, whichever match they decide to go with the main event. I, I would think it would be Taz and Sabu, but... You know, the purist in me believes it should be the world championship or whatever, but got the triple threat uh, thing that they're pushing strong and shit. So I storyline wise, uh, good and solid. Now talent wise, yeah. We go to a Raven promo. He speaks on Sandman and all their trials and tribulations dating back to early 1996 ECW. Shout out to 1996 Fooch. You get better. Not by much. (laughs) He speaks on Stevie equating him and himself to the unpopular school kid. What? But Stevie Richards won't be a factor in the three-way dance. So that brings him to the living legend, (laughs) Terry Funk. (laughs) Terry Funk. He says that wrestling is for the young and Terry Funk is old. Yes. He draws a biblical parable to a man walking in the desert and Raven is God carrying him through the match if he makes it <laughs> through the three-way dance. He goes on about Funk being broken and beaten. Facts. And when he asks for divine intervention, he'll be there to end it. He says something about his father and Funk's quest for the Holy Grail. Holy shit, this is awful. H.W., your oh, you thoughts thought that was of awful? the pro- you thought that? Are you are you kidding me? I thought it was perfect. I thought it was poetic. I thought it was uh, exactly what people like me needed to hear at that moment. We needed to know that somebody was going to vanquish this world of the evil that is Terry Funk. And I love the sim uh, the symbolism that and the parallels that Raven drove or uh, uh, tried to drive home from the Bible, whatever. Thought it was perfect and well done by Raven. Yeah. <laughs> we have a barely legal pay-per-view poster shield that's signed by Taz and Sabu. There's only going to be a thousand, you know, in, in stock, so hurry up and get them. It's so extreme, it's barely legal. I want to vomit. <laughs> Moving on. We have bumpers for April 4th. Four- Goddamn, coffee coffers <laughs> in. Hey, we are the 420 boys. Oh. We have bumpers for April 4th. On the hotline, we got a Scott Hall update. Missy Hyatt bears all for Howard Stern. Gross. Gross. <laughs> we have a Stevie Richards interview, all for $1.99 per minute. Fuck that shit. Move on. <laughs> we have an Extreme Warfare Volume 2. Shield for ECW Home Video, recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 243. You're welcome. We come back to a barely legal pay-per-view poster, Shield. Taz and Sabu, signed by them. Only a thousand, so hurry up and get yours. It's so extreme. 
It's barely legal. So, barely wait a minute, legal. wait a minute. Both of, both of these niggas are signing the same poster and then they're selling it? I mean, yeah, so Paulie got Taz and Sabu to sign like a thousand of these goddamn posters. You know what I'm saying? To sell to the nerds. So if you're the second signer, whether you're Sabu or Taz, and you have so much hate for this other person, why will, would you sign the... Attach your signature to your to their signature, your arch nemesis. If I'm getting a piece of the fucking uh, the, uh, the poster money, hell yeah. Fair enough. So work. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get paid for it. So back with Joey at the nest, going over Ravens, detailing the mind games. He parlays that to his to each of his nemesis, Stevie Richards, Sandman, and Terry Funk. Joey then throws it to a match featuring Raven. We have Raven. And the franchise with Francine in their corner teaming up against Putz and Funk. I didn't even see Beulah, though. Yeah, uh... Yeah, well, yeah, no. I think she came out later. In betwixt the match, we have uh, bumpers for the Lifetime Achievement Banquet for Terry Funk, April 4th, and uh, back and forth match in the early goings. I actually liked it when it was in the ring... I like the match. I like the psychology of the match. But once it got outside the ring, it went up the fucking stairs. The undead bulldozer got in there and all that shit. Did not like the match. It became a fucking cluster fuck. Yeah. Stevie, Stevie got in or some shit. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, that was the, there was only one part of that whole thing that I liked. And that was when Stevie, Stevie and the sad man both hit Terry Funk. That, that made... That made the whole set. Kane, Stevie, and Funk leaves. <laughs> Stevie and Raven fight outside. Funk reverses a suplex into a DDT for two. Franny breaks it up. Cat fight with Beulah. Putz goes for the panty pile driver, but it's countered into a belly to belly. <laughs> Raven then throws Shane off for the win. Holy shit, what a mess. HW, your thoughts on the match? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I guess I kind of uh, blew my load a little early there Pause. about the Pause. Stevie and Sandman being my favorite part. But they, the little extra um, layer of complexity in the finish there with uh, Raven shoving off Shane and I don't know if you noticed Shane give Raven the what the fuck look he basically look like what the fuck are you doing dude everybody played their role perfectly I'm not I'm not fronting on that it was just so motherfucking much oh, yeah. going on in the match like again in the early part of the match I love the fact that Raven Raven wasn't uh, was dodging funk he was fighting Dreamer but dodging funk meanwhile uh, Shane was fighting uh, Dreamer and Funk because he's had the wars between both of them and shit. Raven on the on the, on the, on the other on the other side is playing mind games. Once he goes outside and shit, you know, saying Brian Lee. I mean, Brian Lee's you know he's the henchman and shit. You know, he's he's working with the triple threat, but he still has ties to Raven because Raven's paying him or whatever. I don't know how that how that shit works. They're <laughs> heels, but I love it. But and then you know the the baby faces come in for the for the save. Sandman comes in, knocks everybody out, knocks you know, because he has no fucking allegiances at this, at this point, you know. So I mean, I get why they do it. I just it's it just seems like it's so much, and the pay per views like it's coming. The pay per views it's not like months away and shit. The pay per views like around the corner and shit. One thing I've the the I've noticed, and maybe I'm starting to get a little conditioned to it, but I've noticed that anything involving Raven is going to have. All the extra and all the most in it. Like, it's just going to be over-the-top uh, double dose of Gaga. We have a Raven t-shirt spot moving on. We have bumpers for April 4th, and it's set to a House of Pain song. Boom, shalak lock, boom. Moving on. We have another uh, barely legal pay-per-view poster shield. Taz and Sabu signing that shit. Only a 1,000. So hurry up and get it, nerds. It's so extreme. And there were 950 left. <laughs> it's barely legal. <laughs> Moving on. We come back to a BWO t-shirt spot. From ECW Home Video, we have Crossing the Line again, recounted by us in Extreme Brush Review number 249. You're welcome. We have a Team Taz t-shirt spot. The Beulah t-shirt. Oh, my God. And we come back with the Dudley Boys in the ring being announced by Joel Geekner. Joey calls Gertner the new clueless putz of ECW. <laughs> oh, that's disrespectful. Because the old clueless putz is still right there. ECW tag team title match, three-way dance, Dudley's, Eliminators, and Gangsters. It quickly turns into a Gangsters match. Mustafa with the wipeout, 
Shout out to the god of jobbers, Surfer Ray Odyssey. It's clipped as shit. New Jack jumps into a cutter and it's clipped again. Uh, Shy Guy Dudley with powder. 3D on Cronus for two. Saturn cleans house. Mullen up goes down like an idiot that he is. <laughs> Sign guy with a mirror to Saturn. Dudley's for the win. I gave it one star because my wife was LOLing the entire time. <laughs> Joey going crazy during the match. HW, your thoughts? Well, my, my thoughts of the match is basically a, a car crash that if you've seen it once, you've seen it a, a thousand times, I hate to say. But I did enjoy the mirror spot. I mean, who doesn't? enjoy watching some sort of glass or mirror-like substance being shattered and destroyed in a wrestling ring. Jim Cornette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We come back to another barely legal pay-per-view poster shield featuring Taz and Sabu, autographed by both competitors. Oh 1,000 in stock. So hurry up and get yours. <laughs> It's so extreme. It's barely, it's barely legal. Oh, I'm ready to stab myself. We have a hype package featuring Taz and Sabu for the pay-per-view. Moving on. We have a bumper for April 4th. Moving on. And we have another barely legal pay-per-view shield for the poster featuring Sabu. The homicidal, suicidal, genocidal, death-defying maniac that he is. And the human suplex machine, Taz, which is the main event of pay-per-view uh, of the pay-per-view, and they have a poster for sale. Now, for though, now you know how you've had to sit through that a thousand times. You had to say that a thousand times, Das Fuge. You know how many times I had to watch that or see that or experience that on Peacock, being brought to you via the WWE Network. Zero. Zero times. I do not know how any of you people have not gone insane having to watch uh, a, a poster being signed a thousand times on, uh, what'd you say, a 50 some 56 minute show or whatever yeah. on the tape trailer? 55 minutes and seven seconds. Uh, oh, not, not bad for the paragon of professionalism. But anyway, you had to sit through that a thousand times in 55. 55 minutes and 7 seconds, that's that's crazy. We come back to a match. Sabu versus Louis the Loser. Joey is being uh, guest color commentated by Cut Candido, who has a shoulder, he's got his arm in a sling, and he's acting like he's going to be serious, and he, he's not going to be a goofball on color, and then proceeds to be a goofball <laughs> on color by, by taking Joey's glasses and acting like a damn dork. Quick match stuff to start. Sabu starts the triple jumps outside. Dueling chairs out, outside, back inside. Very sloppy Sabu offense. The second air Sabu gets countered and KOs Mullenope for a second time this show. For fuck's sake, Mullenope. Triple jump gets countered with a chair to the face. He gets the DVD. A second DVD attempt and Taz runs in. Knocks Sabu on the outside. Yes. And Louie to the floor. RVD then runs in with a chair. Why? He what? throws it to Taz for the Van Daminator setup. Taz then throws it back. Sabu no sold the table spot, collides Taz and the chair into RVD. Sabu, Sabu and RVD then have words. Louis the, Lu Luton. Louis the Loser then struggles back in and immediately gets put into the Taz mission by Taz. What the fuck is going on? Taz leaves and says into the camera, no one is going to hurt you but me. Sabu with the triple jump moonsault for the win. Negative infinity! The word that they tried to go out of their way to keep Taz and Sabu from touching each other, the more convoluted and more nonsensical it becomes because he was right there. Why is he putting... Louis Spicoli in the Kata Hajime when he could have easily grabbed Sabu right there. Because a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, there was a fan cam match. Sabu runs in. Um, he has somebody on the on the outside on a table and shit, right? Sabu runs into the ring and then jumps onto the motherfucker that's outside the table. Joey goes, he took Kaz's kill. He stole Taz's kill. So this is just retribution. But wait, it gets fucking worse. Oh, fucking worse. Oh, they cut back to Joey and Cuck. Cuck's going on about talking, taking off his sling and making it a three-way at the pay-per-view between Taz, Sabu, and Cuck <laughs> Candido. As if. As if. <laughs> Taz walks in, Cuck immediately bitches up. Taz proclaims to be the insurance policy for Sabu until the pay-per-view. What? With Cuck mocking him the entire time behind his back. Cuck then reneges on all of his words. <laughs> Taz then thanks him and offers him a favor. What? 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 H-Dub, your thoughts of the post-match. My thoughts of uh, the post-match is my same thoughts at the end of uh, the Sabu Spagoli match in terms of Taz. It's just, why Taz, why? Like, so, all right, we covered the why with the Sabu shit. Why is he doing anything with Cuck Candido because here's why I asked that question because to me I buy Taz like like I, I mentally know he's small of stature or whatever but he carries himself much larger than he is and then all of that comes crashing down to earth when he's staring eye to eye with fellow midget Chris Candido literally Cuck Taz and Joey are the same height <laughs> in the shot. And I felt a little let down. They tried to do some manipulation with the camera work, but it was ridiculous. <laughs> All of them. Like three little bobbleheads. Like little whack-a-moles and shit. Like, don't, don't, don't. Like you never play yourself. Why you play yourself, son? And then, so he's he's going to be the insurance policy for Sabu into the pay-per-view, right? Yeah, whatever. For for what? <laughs> Just don't book Sabu. <laughs> Sabu, take no matches until the pay per view. Like this, this shit started off not making no sense to me when Sabu was not responding to Taz's challenge way a year ago or whenever this shit first started kicking off. And it's just gotten progressively worse. I've been telling y'all the entire time. None of this made sense. <laughs> made sense. <laughs> they overpushed Taz, underpushed Sabu for a year, and then they're trying to make it like they're trying to hastily like build Sabu back up, and it's just it's not working. But I mean, you're locked into the match. It doesn't matter. You're going to see the match regardless. But like, my interest has waned steadily, like precipitously, precipitously. for a year. Like four years. I mean, like we took a three year break for this shit. And I'm still like, all right, Taz gonna fight Sabu. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Oh man, I almost gave myself permanent Undertaker eyes from the consistent eye rolling that I've done every segment, promo, angle that these two have done together on this build the entire time. Moving on. We have a Taz and Sabu package, and it's starting to go into his thing. But Paulie says, go to camera three. And in the locker room, Raven and Terry Funk are going back and forth. Yeah. Terry Funk is sitting on the floor against the lockers. Raven is standing uh, standing upright in front of him, over him. In action. So they go into a back and forth tizzy. You know what I'm saying? Raven keeps telling him to ask him to stand up. So you can fight him. Raven and Funk's like, I'm not standing up or and whatever. I'm kick him! <laughs> Raven <laughs> kicks him like a couple times yeah. into the locker. Yeah. And then they start rolling around and shit. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, they roll around. <laughs> I, I thought it was hilarious because Raven still had the heavyweight title around his waist <laughs> while they're rolling around having their little sissy fight as they go off the air. At first, I thought they was going to disappoint me and Raven wasn't going to kick him in the face. But I literally jumped off my couch when Raven put his boot to his face the, the first time. And then, of course, in true ECW fashion, <coughs> uh, you know, I guess <coughs> Funk had to get uh, a, a little get back. So uh, the little rolling around was, you know, where it was a little more even. Uh, or I guess Funk had a little bit of more of the advantage or whatever. I wasn't feeling that part. But at overall, I was satisfied because who doesn't love watching Terry Funk get kicked in the face? Overall, this show hurt. 
It was very chilly. I mean, it's understandably so. But at this point, what else can you do? Everything is being thrown at you and you cannot digest anything. Pause. Far Cry from 1996. I always figured the beginning of the end of this promotion started at the pay-per-view. But watching this and the shows previously, the cracks are beginning to show. I give this show a heartily thumbs down. <laughs> oh, man, we went total Siskel and Ebert uh, in our uh, takes on this one. Next week. Next week. The Go Home Show for ECW's very first pay-per-view. The April 10th. 1997 show if you have the tape trader we out peace peace we are controlling transmission controlling transmission